This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace, mercy, peace, and blessings to you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, and welcome to worship. As a reminder, we are worshiping in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. in the months of July and August on Sunday mornings. Children's time formation is being offered during the service, led by Jenny Albright. Thank you, Jenny. Also, child care is available during the service as well in the fellowship hall. We will resume our 9 a.m., 11 a.m. schedule starting at the beginning of September. As we transition from arriving here to being here, let us hear the words of 1 John, who says, God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in in them. Let us prepare our hearts to worship Almighty God. Won't you join me in our call to worship? We worship a God with song and dance, singing God's praise and shouting for joy. We worship God with silence and sighs, grieving for loss and longing for comfort. We worship God with prayers and with hands, praying for healing and working for peace. Let us create a Sabbath space and worship the God who gives us life. Let us pray. God of all creation, God whose word is life, what an astounding thing that you seek to speak to us today, and what a terrifying thing that we might miss your word. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to sit up and to lean in and to listen closely. Still our minds and our souls from whatever distractions are churning within and allow us to receive your word and obey that we might know Christ and see your glory beaming in his face. We ask this in his name. Amen. Our scripture lesson for us today continues in the book of Ephesians, which we will be marinating in this summer. Listen now to God's word. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as He chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before Him in love. 
God destined us for adoption as His children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace that He freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace that He lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, He has made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure that He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of Him who accomplishes all things according to His counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in Him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of His glory. Here ends our reading. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In their commentary on Ephesians, our good Trinity Avenue friend Joe Harvard and Alan Verhey call up the refrain of a popular hymn written by John Oatman Jr. that we sing every year at the Walltown Neighborhood Ministries Thanksgiving worship service that we do. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Even Presbyterians cannot help but move when singing it. These lines are a fitting summary of what the author of Ephesians wants the people to do. He wants them to count their blessings, to name them one by one. Out of the gate, the author is blessing God, and he wants us as the readers to bless God too. This seems strange to think of us blessing God. We usually talk about God blessing us. But this is an affirmation of our autonomy, the autonomy of all created things really in relation to God and their agency. God creates us all and sets us in motion to do the purpose we were created for. Each creature designed to offer a unique form of praise with an agency all their own, be it by frolicking in the ocean like Leviathan or leading a life that amplifies the gospel like us. This way of being, living into that which we were created for, is the blessing that we offer to God. To count the blessings of God, you really have to stretch your imagination back to the dawn of time to see the power of God speak new realities into being. You have to see the covenant activity of God humanized in Jesus. And you have to see how every one of our little stories is gathered up into God's great big story, the great big story of God's work and God's cause in the universe, which is to establish in real time a kingdom of all-encompassing love. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who this passage begins, mirroring the ancient and classic formula with which so many prayers began and begin today in the synagogue. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who, and then the author goes on, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He 
destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of Him who accomplishes all things according to His counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in Him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's people, to the praise of His glory. That word destined is used often in those lines. Folks can get pretty worked up over the predestination question which this passage raises, and understandably so with all its talk about being destined. It's also painful when people attempt jokes around predestination because it usually betrays a false premise of understanding. For example, a friend from another tradition and I were having lunch when he dropped his fork. He retrieved it with a big smile and said, "Hey." I guess that was predestined to happen, right? No, not right. He was thinking of predeterminism, something that is orchestrated in advance to happen, like in the sense of of God being a puppeteer dictating all movements. We do not believe this about God, that God predetermines for people to drop their forks. We believe that God creates gravity and heights and grand gestures in conversation that occasionally work together to send cutlery crashing to the ground, and that God can and will use even that crash to advance God's kingdom and God's cause if God so chooses. Predestination as a concept has varying degrees of rigidity depending on whose hands it is in. At its essence, It is the idea that God gets to choose to whom God elects, adopts, and grants an inheritance of salvation. People can get pretty freaked out about this, as one can imagine. But the Reformed branch of the Christian tradition that we subscribe to as Presbyterians tries to lean into the picture of the concept of predestination painted for us in Ephesians. To really grasp predestination, it's best not to think of the concept like a professor, but like a poet. Resist the impulse to reduce it to a binary formula for salvation, thinking of destination in the sense of a place that you travel to, and by the way, is your destination heaven or hell? Think of destination in the sense of destiny. The concept is more romantic than we give it credit for. Ephesians, with its sweeping opening prayer of effusive, elated praise and its winsome enthusiasm for the way we are swept up into God's gracious, creating, saving, recreating activity in Christ, paints a picture that, I think, is closer to the truth of the matter. Biblical Studies professor at St. Paul School of Theology, Dr. Israel Katzmandu, summarizes it nicely. He writes, Believers have a misinterpretation of predestination if they see it as if God made a choice to save some and leave others out. Instead, predestination points to intentionality on the part of God's all-encompassing love of all humanity. God's love does not exclude, but embraces all creation, including the human family. Secondly, God's love makes it possible for humanity to experience the grace and faithful relationship of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, 
our response to God's love, grace, and presence with all believing humanity evokes praise, honor, and worship. Because God does not exclude, humanity should also learn to include others in ways that usher in peace, unity, and love. Ephesians tells us that our destiny as believers, as a church, is a unified reality with God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and all created things. God has already made this so and made it as a gift to us and as a blessing to God, a reality that makes God smile. Therefore, as the church, we are to manifest, to live into this unified state that God has made possible in Jesus. And we do this when the adjective describing our fundamental nature, unified, becomes the verb describing our fundamental mission, to be unifying in love amidst our created diversity, just as God unifies all creation with God's self amidst its staggering diversity in love in Jesus. As it relates to the church and to predestination, the emphasis falls on service, not on status. The blessings of God do not provide a status for the church about which it may boast, but a calling for the church to which it must respond, specifically by being holy and blameless before God in the way that we love. What this means, practically speaking, for us in our worldview as disciples and in our commitments as a church, is that the scope of our concern must include every person and created thing on God's planet. Each blade of grass, each bird and honeybee, each stream of water, each shark and coral, each particle of air, each tree and budding flower, each human child of God was created to bless God through their very being. And we as the church are caretakers of that blessing that goes up to God as praise. And it also means that for us in our worldview as disciples and in our commitment as a church, there can be no exclusion as we carry out our charge as caretakers of God's blessing, as in of the blessing that goes up to God. Because all things have been included in the scope of God's care and God's concern and God's cause in the world in Jesus Christ. People of every tribe, nation, language, color, and condition. Poor people, rich people, lesbian, gay, and bisexual people. Transgender, queer, intersex, asexual, and heterosexual people. Longtime church member and first time visitor. Variously abled. All are distinctive in ways to be honored, understood, and celebrated but all are to be embraced as one of equal value and priority and worth, just as God creates and embraces all of creation as one of equal value and priority in the person and the event of Jesus present with God before the foundations of the world. All of this All of this, Ephesians says over and over, is to the praise of God's glory. The word glory is synonymous with the word nature. So when we live into this calling and make the adjective of our unity, the verb of our unifying mission, all this goes up as praise to God, as a way of blessing God's nature and therefore exhibiting God's nature to the world. This is how we bless God, Ephesians says. 
This is how we use our agency for praise, by doing what we were designed to do in living and loving well. This activity of a lifetime, this work of praise for a lifetime, is called discipleship. And it is happening right now. And when we lean into it, which is to say lean into love, lean into being a unified, unifying people, a loved, loving people, the offering of our lives goes up like incense, reaching the senses of our Maker and giving God joy. Close your eyes. Go on, go on. Close them. Now picture in your mind's eye the star-spangled heavens, the staggering immensity of swirling galaxies, the crashing of ocean waves on the sands, the sound of children's laughter, the massive whale, the burrowing earthworm, the lumbering beetle, the fresh-smelling breeze, the applauding leaves, the warming, radiant sunlight, the different shapes and colors and sizes and features and attributes of the smiling human race. Picture the faces of the people you love, yourself, and Jesus with his arms around it all in love's most expansive posture imaginable. Baruch atah Adonai Elohenu Melech HaOlam. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, God has made known to us the mystery of God's will, according to God's good pleasure set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of God's glory. Enjoy this love note to you. And count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen. All of our lives are lived in response to the word of God that goes forth. As we respond to God's word with the offering of our lives, let us ground ourselves in our faith by saying what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. People of God, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty God, you teach us to pray not only for ourselves, but for people everywhere. You show us the way to life is by dying to ourselves, living for you, and serving our neighbor. So hear us as we pray for the church and the world, for it is in Christ's name that we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray to you, O Lord, for our brothers and sisters and kin who are not ashamed to put their trust in your word, even in the face of their persecutors. We pray to you, O Lord, for people of all faiths who suffer suspicion, violence, and persecution for their worship and beliefs. We pray to you, O Lord, for those who are still bound by their past and their dreams and are not yet open to the call of the kingdom which is to come. We pray to you, O Lord, for those who do not dare to hope in and receive from you all that you are ready to do for them. We pray to you, O Lord, for all those who, through fear of the necessity of their own transformation, do not dare to hearken to the suffering of their brothers and sisters. We pray to you, O Lord, for all who labor under heavy burdens of oppression, sadness, pain, and despair. By your Spirit, O Lord, touch our aching hearts with the balm of your grace. For we pray in Christ's name, remembering the words he taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. People of God, go forth this day in hope and in joy to love and serve the Lord and exhibit the kingdom in everything that you do, and abide always in God's peace. Remember, we do not leave the church, we go forth to be the church. So as you do so, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.